This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to locate the vertex of a quadratic function. The sections in this video are as such. Section 1, we're going to talk about the formula. So we're going to use a formula to find this vertex. We'll talk about that. And then Section 2, we'll do an example. Section 3, we'll do our second example. All right, let's get started. All right, here's our first section. Uh, we're going to talk about what formula to use. Well, first of all, you're going to be given a quadratic function, and it's always going to be written in this form, where you're going to have some square term and a coefficient in front of it called a, an x term coefficient in front of that called b, and then a constant term. All right, so when you are given a function that's in this form, the vertex, and you should know what a vertex is, right? So if you graph a parabola, sometimes the parabolas go up, and sometimes the parabolas go down. Okay, in either case, there is either a maximum, like right here, or on the left graph, we see a minimum point. In either case, we call these vertices. Okay, so we call the vertices. Well, it turns out that that vertex can be found by using a formula. Well, the formula for the vertex, well, the, it has, each one of these points has an x and a y value, right? There's an x and a corresponding y value that, that goes with it. So to locate this, you need those two values. So the x value of that vertex is the opposite of b over 2a. Okay, so that's what we do. We just take the opposite of b, divide it by 2a, and you get the x value. Uh, now to get the corresponding y value, what you can do is then take this x value and throw it into the function itself, right? If this is the function, which normally we, if we use function notation, that would be f of x. So what we would do is we would take the function and we would toss in the opposite of b over 2a. And that would be the vertex. Now, if you're wondering where this opposite of b over 2a comes from, it's a long conversation that requires uh, you to know how to complete the square, and it also requires you to know translations of functions, of which we do not have any time in this video to discuss those matters. So uh, what you can do is, uh, since I have a video that talks about the derivation of that value, opposite b over 2a, watch it. Okay, so you can just click on that little box I've got there, watch the video, and you can come back over here and finish up. All right, let's move on to our first example. All right, so for our first example, we're going to take a function, and we're going to call it, instead of f of x, I'm going to call it h of t, and I'll explain why in a moment. So let's say we have this function, and it is quadratic, because you can see I've got a square term. And I've got these values. Okay, so it's a very strange looking quadratic function, um, but this is the function you would get if you're talking about gravity. Um, so in other words, a uh, projectile thrown within the gravitational confines of Earth. Uh, we're in feet per second, and we give the uh, projectile an initial hor uh, vertical toss of 100 feet per second and it starts at 20 feet off the ground. All right, you don't need to know anything about that to know what follows. I'm just trying to give you a little basis for where this comes from, all right? So this is Earth gravity, and the projectile starts at 100 feet per second vertically, upward, obviously, and uh, the object is originally 20 feet off the ground. Okay, so someone's throwing some object out of the air, and it's going to behave according to this uh, quadratic. At least we can calculate the height according to this quadratic. Well, what we'd like to know is where is the maximum height? Okay, so like I said, this thing started 20 feet off the ground. Someone gives it a toss up in the air, and they give it a toss up in the air at 100 feet per second. And we want to figure out, well, where is this point? Where's the maximum value? So I want to know what the x value is and the y value of that point. All right, well, the x value, or maybe I should say more appropriately to this problem, it's not really x, it's time and height. 
or x and y, if you're thinking in terms of just x and y, plain old x and y's. All right, anyway, to solve for x, or I should say t in this problem, we're going to take the opposite of b all over 2a. All right, so what do we get? We get negative 100. I get negative 32. And I do some calculations. And I get 3.13. All right, now what we want to do, oh yeah, and by the way, that is in feet. Nope, feet per second, so that would be seconds, if that's time. All right, now what we want to do is figure out what's the corresponding height. Um, all right, well, to get that, we now take that value and plug it into the formula. Or in this case, it's the quadratic function. So we're going to figure out what is h of 3.13. Okay, I'm going to write a little small so I can squeeze all this in here. So 313 squared plus 100 times 313 plus 20. Okay, so I crank this out with the calculator and sparing you all the details, but if I do crank this out with the calculator, I'm getting 176.25. And of course, since this is in feet and seconds, this is going to be feet. Okay, so that's how high the, the projectile gets. So, let's go on to our second example. So, let's say for this function, we have a slightly different function. And we're going to have minus 5t squared plus 20t plus 4. Now, if you're wondering why the numbers have changed here for this particular quadratic, is um, <clears throat> I'm using a quadratic function that is in, instead of feet per second, like, like our last example, this is in meters per second. So the gravity is going to have a different number there. Okay, so um, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Anyway, it's a lot of physics going into this instead of 32 feet per second. Anyway, you don't need to know that. It's just a nice little quadratic function. We know that it's got an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. And it's sitting four feet off the ground, sorry, four meters off the ground at its starting point. So in other words, what happens? You throw up this projectile and it comes back down, right? We don't care at the moment where it comes back down. Uh, we just want to know at what point does it reach its maximum height? So at what time value does it reach its maximum height? Okay, so again, I'm going to use a formula. So the formula for t is the opposite of b over 2a. Okay, so b is 20, a is negative 5. Okay, so what do I get? I get negative 20 all over negative 10, which is 2. Okay, so what does that mean? It means two seconds after this projectile is launched, it reaches its maximum height. Now, what is the maximum height? we've got to use the function. So we're going to put in 2 inside the function. So I'm going to put in 2 squared. I'm going to put in 20 times 2, oops, not t, 2, and I'm going to put in the 4. Okay, so I'm going to get 4, it's negative 20, and 20, yep, it's going to be 24. Okay, just did the calculations. You could, of course, throw this into a calculator, and our units for time were seconds and our unit for height was meters for this particular problem. And there you go. I've got my maximum height according to time. There you go. That's it. So go back to mathguide.com. Check out our other text lessons. Check out our interactive quizzes and, of course, our other instructional videos. Take care.